In the previous series, we learned that trigonometry stands for triangle measurement. Ratio on the other hand is the quantitative relationship between two amounts showing the number of time one value contains or is contained within the other. This series will make use of six methods of teaching. Usually called the scientific method, we will start with the problem. Something has to happen before someone would want to find a solution to and that usually start with confusion or dissatisfaction. Second is knowledge. Once a problem has occurred, we try to find a solution. But before we arrive at the solution, we need to understand the problem at hand. And we do this through observation and forming hypotheses. Third up, third is plans. If we understand the problem, we try to find the right and effective way to solve the problem. And that includes the safety and demographics that are going to use the, the project. These are the theoretical parts of gaining knowledge. After the theoretical part, we move to practicals by building tools that can be used to create a device or an equipment that neutralizes or solves the problem. Solution to the problem comes a new way of life, curiosity to new life and a new problem. Therefore, for this series, we will start with a quick triangle review, then move on to devices and instruments for measurement used to create tools for surveying, construction, navigation, and then dive into trigonometry, building up on our previous, um, our previous knowledge. So when humans came to this earth, they needed to establish land, build houses, and also build farms. So they started to develop geometry to help them do all these things so that they can live in harmony. They started to look into lines and angles and they saw that everything has to live in a plane, somewhere that they can survive. And so if a line lives in a plane, a two straight line lives in a plane and they never meet, they will be called parallel lines. But if they end up crossing each other, they cross in an intersection line, in an intersection point, and in that intersection point, there is a space that it creates. And that space is called an angle. You can look everywhere around you and you can see that whenever the two things meet or cross, it creates an angle. And when, the, when there is an intersection point, you can rotate the line across. If you rotate the line until it is the same as the horizontal line, this is called, this is called a right angle. However, if it's below the right angle, we call it the acute angle. If it is above the right angle, it is an obtuse angle. And if you rotate it all the way till it's the same as the horizontal line, we call it the straight angle. And then they started to realize that if you add another more line to these two lines that have already been studied, it can create a complementary angle or a supplementary angle. Complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees or a right angle and supplementary angles are angles that add up to a straight line. And so when you rearrange the, th the three lines also, you get a new shape, a shape that is a three angled shape, which means that it creates three spaces inside of it. They call that a triangle. And so they realize that this is exactly the same as the principles of the supplementary angle. Everything inside this shape adds up to 180 degrees. And so the properties that they found that it could have a side or an angle. The side could be an equilateral triangle which all the sides and the lengths are the same. Or an isosceles triangle which means the sides, two sides are equal. And a scalene triangle which means none of the sides are equal. And each of them should have an angle too exactly as when we, they were studying the lines and angles. It could be an acute angle a right angle or an obtuse angle. This principle became very useful because now they are able to add more lines and create more shapes. But they stick to the very basic line and then they realized that if you find the perimeter of an angle, you are able to find the area and this area helps you determine boundaries. And also, if you use the right angle to create a polygon, you are able to find something called the Pythagorean Theorem, 
which helps you find the sides of any right angle. And then they found special triangles, where if you split a polygon into two, you are able to find a 45 to 45 and 90 degree angle and splitting an equilateral triangle into two, you are able to find a 30, 60, 90 degrees angle. With this, they started to build instruments for measurement. They started with protractor to help them measure angles, rulers to help them measure lines, drawing compass to help them draw shapes, and triangle rulers to help them measure triangles. With new technology and measurement comes new questions. How do we look at the signs and seasons? How do we look at bad omens and cycles around our world? So the Babylonians started with the Plimpton 322, building a table of 15 rows and 4 columns. They started to look at progressions in a triangle. They thought of the triangle as being a part of a rectangle, so they built off of the Pythagorean theorem, looking at the di um, diagonal side and the long side or the short side and the long side. And they saw that as your progression moves, it gets smaller or larger. And then they saw that the short side and the diagonal side, using the Pythagorean theorem, you're able to find a long side. Knowing these principles, they were able to compile tables that helped them look at signs and cycles. Like the Saros cycles, they were used to predict eclipse. The zodiacs were used to mark the months and times and seasons and basic tools for measuring heights and distance of a building. However, the Greeks and the Indians wanted to know more. They wanted to know what was out there. They wanted to know the general principles of the universe. So they started to theorize how the world will look like. They came up with how the world looked like a sphere. So they inscribed a triangle inside of a, of a circle. And so they started to observe that if you inscribe a triangle inside of a circle, you can observe some things that as the angle increases, the long side increases while the short side decreases and as the angle in decreases, the short side increases while the long side decreases. Let's take, one, uh, let's take one triangle and analyze it to see the changes of the height and the base and the hypotenuse. We'll be using the 45, 45, 90 degrees angle and start to first solve for the sides of each one. And so when we see that we see that the, our 45 degrees angle, we can find a complementary angle by subtracting it from 90 degrees. And also, we can see that the height is opposite to the angle and the base is adjacent to the 45 degrees angle. Now that we know this, we can solve for the relationship of the 45 degree angle at the height. And all that we need to do is to find the ratio between the height and the hypotenuse. And once we found the ratio between the height and the hypotenuse, we find out that this is half of a chord. So they named it the sine, or which means the the half of a chord. And since the height is opposite and the hypo uh, to uh, opposite to 45 degrees angle, we can say that the sine of an angle is opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Next time when we meet again, we will dig deeper into deriving the ratios, look at the reciprocals of these ratios and how we can apply them in real life applications.